Good afternoon. I'm Katie Cottingham, and welcome to this news briefing from the 251st National Meeting and Exposition of the American Chemical Society in San Diego. We're joined today by Jin Sheng Li from the University of California, San Diego. He will be talking to us about nanomotors that could one day help electronics fix themselves. Mr. Li? Yep. So uh, I'm Jin Sheng Li uh, from Joseph Wang Lab at UC San Diego. So part of my lab is focusing on uh, a new type of motors or machines that are made from uh, nanoscale building blocks for a lot of many functions. So today I'm going to talk about one of the example. So it's used nanomotors to repair microscopic cracks. We know that cracks and other type of damage at the micro, um, microscopic level, they're very hard to be repaired by our manual intervention because they're extremely small. But they can change the electro, uh, electronic and optic property of materials, and they can uh, propagate and uh, finally lead to the failure of their whole materials. So, uh, but if we look at the nature, our natural, you know, uh, biological system, they have very uh, good ability to feel, uh, to heal themselves. So, for example, if you have wood or cut in your blood vessel, so basically the platelet can, you know, aggregate as a damaged site. They, you know, they can heal the, you know, blood vessel and stop the bleeding. So, uh, what we did is we took the uh, inspiration from nature. Uh, here we designed artificial uh, self repair system. So basically, uh, one of the important features of the natural system is that you know the natural the healing agent they can move and they can localize at the damaged site. So here we designed a nanomotor system. So they're made from gold, platinum genus nanoparticles. So they are chemically powered. They move autonomously. And here, maybe you can see the video that there's a surface small crack there. They move autonomously. So basically, after a while, they are localized at the crack site. So they stay there. And because of these particles are very conductive, so they restore the conductivity of this electrode and repair the device. So uh, I think this is a very uh, inspiring um, engineering concept that we uh, would would use because this system they don't need any like human intervention you know so basically what we do is we put the nanoparticle suspensions under you know scratch damaged device these motors will autonomously swim and they just accumulate aggregate on the crack so basically the particles are like 100 times smaller than the diameter of your hair so they can repair some damage that you know in, 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 invisible by our by our naked eyes. So we, uh, we envision that this could be used for a lot of uh, device and systems, for example, flexible electronics, which might easily get cracked. Also, uh, as an engineering concept, reversely, we want to take this engineering concept back to the natural system for biomedical research. And we think that uh, this is very promising uh, if we engineer a similar engineering system to, you know, for, for example, target drug delivery and um, uh, also like nanoscale surgery. So basically, uh, for example, if this nano, nano motors, they can deliver medicines, drugs, you know, only to the disease side. If they can sense and search and localize at the d disease side. So in this case, I think these nanomotors can improve their, you know, therapeutic efficiency. So this is uh, basically uh, uh, what we are doing. Okay, thanks. And do we have any questions? Uh, wait for our microphone and please state your name and affiliation when you're asking your question. Uh, Bradley Fike, San Diego Union Tribune. Mm -hmm. uh, what properties uh, enable these uh, nanoparticles to bind to the defects? Is it like some kind of electrostatic force or uh, how do they hope know where to go? Yeah, so basically, uh, so the cracks uh, change the dynamics of these nanomotors because of two reasons. First, uh, I think these this nanomotors, because they are extremely small, they, you know, just mechanical confinement, they, are, they prefer to stay in the change. And another reason is that it depends on what crack is. So in this case, uh, the crack 
as glass substrate is slightly hydrophobic than the gold surface. So we did a surface modification to make the particle surface hydrophobic. So there is also hydrophobic hydrophobic interaction between the cracks and the nanomotors. Thank you. Okay. Kat. Could you tell us a bit more about the composition of the nanomotor? It's made of platinum and gold, but how then is it powered? Where's all the fuel stored? Where's the H2O2 yep. stored? Yep. So basically, uh, this nano swimmers, nanomotors, uh, is, is, is chemically powered. Basically, what we do is like we just buy the commercial gold nanoparticles, and we use sputter to coat, coat one side with platinum. So the platinum is kind of catalyst for peroxide. So here the fuel is peroxide. So basically it can decompose peroxide to water and oxygen on the surface. You know, the oxygen, so in this case, uh, the oxygen gradient will power this. This, this is, it, is pretty much like a rocket, you know. But even you cannot see the oxygen uh, in, the, in the solution. Yeah. Platinum is pretty expensive. Um, I know it's even yep. used as nanoparticles, but are there any alternatives that you could do? Uh, sure, because uh, in this case, what we want to do is like, because we, you know, we, we are called very thin layer first. And another thing, you know, a lot of uh, expensive electronic devices that use gold and, uh, and uh, even, even platinum or and other noble metals. So here, you know, if you think about it, if you want to repair this device manually, you will need a lot of more gold, but in this case, our nanoparticles, most of them, very few amount of nanoparticles are localized, but they directly accumulate at the damage site. So we don't waste a lot of, you know, so I think uh, this technique basically is save the cost. How quickly does it repair? Uh, so here is a five minutes video, you know, actually we accelerate the video, but basically it takes like um, uh, 10 minutes. And is the crack Repaired. I mean, do, have you tested the crack after the repair to see how strong it is? Because sometimes those regions are still susceptible. I suppose. Yep, yep. So basically, uh, we test like what, what, uh, how much the the conductivity can restore, and uh, use use this. The concentration here is like um, uh, around 20 nanometers uh, per like 100 meter. Uh, uh, multiple by 100, uh, 100 micrometer multiple by 100 micrometer. So it's very, di very dispersed particles. And uh, we show that it can restore the uh, conductivity uh, over 50%. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? Bela? <laughs> when you're, uh, Bela Buslik, uh, Office of Public Affairs, uh, when you uh, construct these devices uh, that uh, that get scratched, uh, uh, you basically have to uh, design it so there'll be these nanoparticles around at from the very beginning of the construction. It's it's not something that you just uh, just add later on to repair the crack. Uh, yeah, so it's it's got to be there to start with. So. It, uh, when, it, when you're designing the circuit, mm -hmm. the nanoparticles are designed into the circuit uh, as a preventive me uh, measure. Yeah, I, yep. So I think uh, your point is like, uh, is, it, is it possibility that we uh, integrate this, this system well, with... Uh, that's, that's the question, really. Yeah. Uh, do you integrate it into the, into the circuit, or do you <laughs> apply it after... Uh, after Actually, yeah. There? In the self-healing materials research, I think a lot of uh, people are doing like they integrate like some agent in their materials, but uh, that concern might come from you know they can you know affect the original performance of the materials. So, so what we did here, we we we, we did it after. So basically, we didn't uh, directly integrate this nan nanoparticle system, but but the good thing is that uh, since we add this suspension on the on the particle surface, we don't do any uh, we don't need to do anything more. So it's it's really not a preventive. It's 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 a repair that you you do afterwards. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the other thing uh, thing is, since it, your abstract said something about uh, uh, oxygen evolution, uh, uh, 
uh, uh, essentially drives the particles in, 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 to the crack and, and so forth. Is the uh, EMF potential difference between platinum and uh, gold uh, play any part of it, or 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 is it because uh, because the the item is still under power uh, with a with a uh, the crack interrupting the circuit, so so all of a sudden you've got uh, you've got measurable potential between the two halves of the uh, the part of the circuit, or what is it that triggers the, uh, triggers the move, uh, movement other than just you know sitting there? So you you mean what's the uh... what what particular event is what uh, what starts the uh, the driving force the oxygen or, or uh, the, to to have the particles move to the uh, this, uh, side of the crack. Okay, so uh, basically, it's, as I said, is is kind of a in this in this solution they are peroxide. So basically, they are kind of working as a fuel, chemical fuel. Okay. So basically, uh, we know platinum is a catalyst. So peroxide can uh, decompose to to the to the uh, water and oxygen. So basically, you know, we have like a symmetry particle. So it's a gold. Share, but this part is code with platinum. So you can imagine that you will have more oxygen on this side. Okay, this, that's, this will... that's basically the, uh, the, uh, you answered the question. Yep. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, let's go over here and then we'll go in the back. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, how many different types of nanomotors have you developed, or have you developed more than one, perhaps, for different types of interfaces? I mean, in, in this work? Yeah, or? in this work. Uh, in this work, prop, uh, we just used uh, this single type of uh, platinum gold nanospheres uh, because we want to make them very conductive, so we use gold. But actually, our lab, uh, uh, we have not a lot of many more nanomotors you know, active moving nanoparticles. They can be driven not just by chemical reaction. So basically we use, for example, magnetic field, remotely activate them or use acoustic field. So basically they don't, they don't need any, they don't need you to add any chemical fuel in the, in the solution. Okay, yeah. so, but the, this research has not been published yet, right? You're just working on it right now? You mean uh, the one I mentioned? Yes. Actually, uh, a lot of them uh, are published already. So, like, okay. m like magnetic. So, so you've already developed different types. Yep, 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 okay. yep. <clears throat> okay. The online question or question to back. <laughs> Christine Soff of Public Affairs. Um, so I was just wondering. You had mentioned earlier the potential application for. Um, nano surgery, and I was wondering if you could expand on that a little bit. What kind of surgery would that be? Uh, okay, so basically, one was one of the thing what we did is like we use uh, we use nanomotors to you know to capture, for example, to capture and isolate cancer cell. Uh, I think it's published like uh, several years ago in our lab. So I think the, you know, uh, in, in relation to this work, I think one of the engineering concepts what we want to show is like, for example, if you, you have some damage or you have some disease over there. So in biologic system, I think it's, it's more advanced. Probably they can release some signal in, in, the, in the environment. For example, if, if, uh, for example, for tumor, the environment surrounding the tumor is, is, is very low pH. So if the nanomotors can sense and uh, accumulate at a low pH environment, basically they will, you know, autonomously, you know, went to the tumor site and we can do some uh, therapy. And we can, use, we can also use nanomotors to, 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 to deliver medicine to the tumor site. So, or, or combine with other, like, um, uh, you know, for example, chemotherapy, to, to, to combine that one with our nanomotors. So basically, we, we would be able to enhance the therapeutic efficiency because this, this, this agent, they, they directly, you know, aggregate and accumulate at the disease side. I think this is a concept. Okay, other questions? Uh, yeah. The microphone's coming. <laughs> Sam Tracy, Chemistry World. Forgive me if this one's already been asked. Do you have ideas of what you might do to increase the number of particles that, that congregate inside the, the cracks? Could you increase somehow the stickiness of them? 
Okay, so uh, yeah, it's such a good question. Uh, I didn't mention, but there are, uh, there are several points that we, uh, we actually in the paper we discussed more detail. Definitely, uh, the first thing is like the speed. Uh, if you use a higher concentration of the fuel, they will move faster. In this case, they have better chance to run into the cracks. And uh, in terms of number, if you use a higher, you know, suspension, higher density of the motors, definitely there will be more in there. And also, it, it depends on you know the, the the surface property of these nanomotors. I think there are a couple of reasons to you know uh, factors to increase that. Okay. Other questions? If not, oh, Matt, do you have a question? Uh, Matt Davenport, Chemical and Engineering News. Um, with with applications like these, where it's you know repairing a solid state device, do you see there being a more immediate commercial opportunity for such devices compared to like a nano surgery where you'd have to go through a regulatory agency like FDA? Um, I think in terms of uh, electronic system, so as I said, uh, what we show here is uh, is, is, is an engineering concept that we 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 want to you know demonstrate the nanomotors. There's something move and can repair. So in terms of uh, you know, uh, for example, industry or applications, uh, I think uh, it's possible that we could use this for, for example, like solar cell or even like some expensive like displays. If you have some cracks, basically the small cracks probably you cannot um, cannot repair. Basically, if you engineering uh, materials, they can move and they can swim towards the crack and do. And do the repair, and they can, you know, they can fix it. I, I think this will save a lot of cost. Okay, then um, thank you very much for coming to this press conference. The archived version of the session will soon be posted at bitly slash ACS Live San Diego. Please join us for our next press conference today at 1.30 on measuring cannabinoid dosage in, mar <clears throat> excuse me, in marijuana munchies. Thank you.